piston cylinder device contains a substance with an initial pressure of 200 bar and a volume of 50 centimeters cubed. It undergoes three processes to form a cycle. The first process is isobaric and the volume doubles. The second process is isometric and ends when the pressure is 80 bar. The final process is polytropic. Determine the work transfer for each process in kilojoules. So we'll begin with our given information. So this is a piston cylinder device. And so we'll draw a little piston cylinder device here. And we note that the initial pressure, which we'll call P1, is 200 bar. And the initial volume is 50 centimeters cubed, both drawn from this first statement of the problem statement. So then we have a description of processes going on here. So what we'll show in our given information is process 1 to 2. What do we know about it? Well, it's isobaric. And what can we conclude from that? Well, isobaric means constant pressure, so that means P2 equals P1 equals 200 bar. Now it also says that the first process is isobaric and the volume doubles. So we also know then that V2 is 2V1, and that'll be 100 centimeters cubed. So we're learning things about the end state of this process from the description. So process two to three is isometric, and the problem statement here says that the isometric process ends when the pressure is 80 bar. So that tells us that P3 is 80 bar. And because it's isometric, that means V3 equals V2, okay? Now the final process, three to one, is polytropic. And that means that P3, V3 to the N is equal to P1, V1 to the N. So the final process is polytropic. Notice because it's a cycle, the final process takes us from point three back to the original state, back to one. So this polytropic equation here is connecting point three and point one. So that's all of our given information. What were we asked to find? Well, we're asked to find the work transfer for each process. And so that's the work from one to two, the work from two to three, and the work from three to one. So that's the final, final process in the cycle. So our assumptions So we're going to be calculating these work transfers from work is equal to the integral of PdV. So the two assumptions are, first of all, this is a closed system. So the amount of substance in this piston cylinder device is the same throughout this entire cycle. And also, it's quasi-equilibrium processes. So all of these processes are quasi-equilibrium. So quasi-equilibrium processes, okay? So on to our analysis. So because we're doing work calculations here in a closed system, we're gonna consider a PV diagram to help us with this problem. So PV diagram, we'll draw our PV axes here. And 
And remember, this is just a sketch. We're not trying to draw this uh, accurately to scale. So our first process, remember, is isobaric. So it's a constant pressure process. Okay, And then the second process is constant volume down to a lower pressure. So we'll show our first process here going from state point 1 across constant pressure to state point 2. So like that. Okay. Second process is constant volume and the pressure reduces. So we go straight down to point 3. And so finally, our last process from 3 to 1 is polytropic. So remember, that's a curved line. So like that, okay? So constant pressure, constant volume, polytropic. And we need to find the work for all three of those. Okay? So that's our little sketch of a PV diagram. So the next thing we need to do here is go ahead and calculate the work. So the work from 1 to 2 is the integral from 1 to 2 of P dV. Notice uppercase V, uppercase W, total amounts. Now because this is a constant pressure process, we can take the pressure outside of the integral because it's constant, and this just becomes P1 times V2 minus V1. So work for a constant pressure process. And if we look back at the problem statement, we know all of these things. We know pressures and volumes, so we can go ahead and calculate this work right away. So that P1 was 200 bar. Now here's where we need to be a little bit careful. In order for our work units to work out to kilojoules, which is what we want, we can't use a pressure in bar here. We need to convert this to kilopascals. Well, there are 100 kilopascals in one bar. So multiplying this by 100, we'll get it in kilopascals. And then we're ready to put our volumes in. So the two volumes are 100 centimeters cubed minus 50 centimeters cubed. And likewise, we can't have centimeters in here if we want our units of work to work out to kilojoules. We need this volume change to be in cubic meters. So we'll put a unit conversion here. One cubic meter is one million cubic centimeters. So 1 over 10 to the sixth. So we calculate all of that out and we get our work from 1 to 2 and that works out to 1.00 kilojoules. So that's our work from 1 to 2. So now we can move on to the second process. So the work from 2 to 3 is the integral from 2 to 3 of PDV. So notice this is always so notice this is always our starting point for work calculation, work is integral PDV. But in this case, 2 to 3 is a vertical line, constant volume process, so this is 0. And I'll just make a note here. This is because this is constant volume. Okay. Last process, 3 to 1, is the integral PDV from 3 to 1. And this is a polytropic process. So the work for a polytropic process is the product of P and V at the end point. So notice that's 1. So P1, V1, minus P3, V3, product of P and 3 at the beginning, divided by 1 minus N. So that's our equation for, for work. Now, we know all of these pressures and volumes from the problem description. The issue we have with just going ahead and calculating this right away is we don't know N. So we need N. Well, the way we can get N is by looking at the polytropic process from point 1 to point 3. So P1, V1 to the N is equal to P3, v3 to the n. Okay, so we know all these pressures and volumes we can solve for that v. Now the way to do this, lots of ways to do it, but I'm going to take a ratio of volumes on one side and a ratio of pressures on the other side. So just rearranging this we get v1 over v3 to the n is equal to p3 over p1. 
Now if I take the log of both sides of this equation, so log of both sides, left hand side will be n log v1 over v3, and the right hand side will just be the log of p3 over p1. So taking the log of both sides of that equation. So this will allow us to solve for n. So n will equal the log of p3 over p1 divided by the log of v1 over v3. And notice it doesn't actually matter whether you use common or natural logs here as long as you use the same in both cases. So this is the log. So this pressure ratio, we just need to make sure we have the same units on those pressures. So this is 80 bar over 200 bar. And the units are the same, so they cancel out. Divided by the log. So V1 over V3, if we go back to our, our uh, diagram here, V1 over V3 is 1 over 2. Because we're told during this process the volume doubles, well, it also doubles going from here to here. So V1 over V3 is 1 over 2. So we calculate this out and we get 1.3219. So our polytropic index is 1.3219. So now we're ready to go back and do our work calculation. So the work from 3 to 1 will be our 200 bar multiplied by 100 to get it into KPA. So notice I'm just doing a little bit shorter version of that unit conversion here. This is 200 times 100 KPA times, so that is our, our P1. Then our V1 is 50 divided by 10 to the sixth cubic meters. So that's P1, V1. Pressure in kilopascals, volume in cubic meters, minus P2, it's 80 bar, but we need to multiply that by 100 to get to KPA. And then the volume is 100 centimeters cubed, so divide by 10 to the 6 to get meters cubed. And then that whole thing is divided by 1 minus 1.3219. P1, V1, minus P3, V3, all over 1 minus N. So our work from 3 to 1 works out to negative 0.62126 kilojoules. And if we just go back to our diagram here and see if that makes sense. Remember the work going from here to here was positive 1. That makes sense. It's an expansion moving from left to right. The work going from here to here should come out negative because it's a compression, and it should certainly be less in magnitude than the work going from 1 to 2. Remember, the work is the area underneath the curve. So it makes sense that it's come out to a negative number and something less than 1. So we can finish off here then with our final statement. The work transfer... for the three processes is the work from 1 to 2 is equal to 1.00 kilojoules. The work from 2 to 3 is 0 kilojoules. Remember that's our constant volume process. And finally, the work from 3 to 1 is equal to negative 0.621 kilojoules. So all expressed to three significant figures. So that's the end of that example problem.